Hey folks, it's Lucy with Ballyhoo Creations and in this vlog number six, I believe, for machine embroidery, I wanna talk about brand loyalty to our embroidery machines. Sometimes I'm in a Facebook group for machine embroidery. Um, I check them about once a day, actually. And at least once a week, someone comes on and says, hey, I'm new to embroidery, what machine should I get? And everybody's like, oh, I have this machine and it's the greatest. Oh, I have this one, you'll love it. Everybody loves their machine doesn't mean that it's the best machine. It just means that it's theirs and so it's the best for them because they love it. And what's happening is something that psychologists would call confirmation bias. What that means is that you've already made the decision. You've, those people have already paid money, probably a lot of money, for a particular machine. To not love it would basically mean that you were not very smart if you spent that much money on a machine that's not great. What does that say about you as a buyer? So instead what the brain does, and this is not something that we're consciously thinking of, this is something that the backseat driver is, like our emotions are making us do without us realizing. It's telling us that we did the right thing and obviously our machine is great. And look at all these other people who love this machine. And all of these things, we just convince ourselves that this machine is so wonderful and we wanna spread the news and tell everybody about it. Because if other people are buying the machine, that means that we did the right thing in the first place. It's how our brain works. Why am I talking about this? Because people actually argue about which brand is better. Um, people discuss at length. There, there was a discussion that came up on my comment section of what machine to buy, which was about a month ago, so go check out that video if you're still shopping, um, about Brother and Baby Lock. And everyone pretty much knows they're made in the same factory. Uh, they're the same machines, they have the same menu buttons, they're basically like the cases have a different color sometimes and a different label. One says Baby Lock, one says Brother. But all the mechanics of it are the same, but the discussion was about the quality is better for Baby Lock. And I don't know that there's a different quality assurance team for the Baby Lock people at the factory and the Brother people at the factory. If that's true, then I think you could say one has better quality than the other but there's a good chance that it's the exact same team checking the quality on both as those machines roll off the assembly line. So how can you say quality's better on one than the other? Um, I'd love to hear from a service tech. If you're a service tech and you service both those machines, how different are they? Is the quality on one better? Is the service better on one brand than another? It could be that, and I have heard that Baby Lock has a different service model and it's easier to maybe a better warranty or maybe just take your machine in and they're more customer service friendly but i know that brother you know the dealers are very competitive too so who knows bernina has a cult following not necessarily with the machine embroidery but with the, the quilting world definitely there's the um oh i have a bernina and everyone's supposed to kind of be like oh wow you have Bernina because it's that kind of machine. It has clout in the, the sewing world and they are sturdy machines. I remember using Berninas in high school, learning how to sew. And uh, if those teenagers in high school couldn't break those machines, they're sturdy. They're really, they, they really built to last. Um, and a lot of the machines today still are. Some of them are not built to last. Uh, some of them are built to be replaced every few years. That's our consumer electronics um, society that we live in, we have a throwaway society, and the makers of machines know that, and they don't expect you to use that machine for several years, so they don't care if the board dies after a couple of years, because that's just gonna make you go and upgrade to a better machine. So they don't just get your $2,000 now, they get your $5,000 a few years from now. It doesn't hurt them at all, right? As long as you're upgrading, or you'll pay to get it fixed, and they can make some money off of that too. So be aware of all of these things. When you're putting your money into an embroidery machine, Keep reminding yourself of all of the logical things that you know to be true and not all the emotional things that the backseat driver in your brain is telling you. Like, oh, I gotta have this machine now, or oh, I can't wait. I've been there, I know what that feels like. Um, it took me a year before I finally bought a multi-needle. I mean, a year of shopping, and maybe two years, because I remember being at a state fair and, and having them looking at all the different models that were there and seeing what's on the market, what the prices are, talking to representatives. And it was a year and a half or more before I actually put some money into it. So be patient, get what works for you. Don't let a person, whether it's a salesperson or someone who has a particular machine, don't let them talk you into a particular machine. All of them have issues, I promise you. 
there's no such thing as a perfect machine out there. All of them have little idiosyncrasies that you're gonna have to learn to work around. On the multi-needles brother and baby lock, things like wiper errors, things like um, the threads don't cut correctly, that's what happens there. Things like, um, what's another common one that I see in the user groups? And it's funny that the user groups are people who rave about how great these machines are, but they also talk about common problems. And when someone says, I'm having this problem, what do you think is happening? And, and I can't tell you how many dozens of people are like, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, that's a known issue. Yeah, we all have that problem. These are the same people in the other groups telling you how wonderful and amazing that machine is, but when they're together in their own group, they're talking about all the problems that they have. Join a user group. All of the user groups that I'm aware of, whether it's a Facebook user group or if you find one somewhere else, they'll let you into the group if you're just considering purchasing a machine. So that's another thing you can do. If you've already narrowed it down and you know what you're thinking of buying, uh, go on a Facebook group for that particular machine. Just type it into Facebook search, name of the machine, and see what comes up and you might find a user group that will let you in and you can start asking questions of people who have been using that machine for years and they'll really tell you the scoop on that machine and ask them not just is it wonderful but if you could change one thing what would you change on that machine and then you'll really get the scoop on the different idiosyncrasies of all those machines so be careful while you're shopping i don't want you to make a bad decision i want you to buy a machine that you love to embroider on that you just can't wait to you get up in the morning like oh i get to stitch something today so if you hate your machine then you'll never watch my channel. So I have a little bit of a vested interest. It's not just me being a good person, but I want you to do well as, as well. That is part of it. So that's all about buying machines and be a knowledgeable consumer and don't let the backseat driver in your brain, the emotional guy back there tell you what you need. You need to like keep the logic going and say, well, whoa, wait a minute. What's the other side of this story? Always ask yourself, what's the other side? and then kind of argue with yourself, debate back and forth. Well, this machine has this. Yeah, but I only need, put on hand puppets if you want, <laughs> whatever works. Speaking of hand puppets, I'm gonna talk about the stuff that I've been working on this week. And actually last week, my vlog was about um, needles and I didn't actually do an update on my d latest designs. So I digitize designs and mostly what I do is in the hoop projects and mostly in the hoop dolls. And so I have two new designs that are gonna be coming out soon. And here's one, okay, one just lost his head. So, okay, here's one, this is a new body shape and this is the wide body here. He's a little chubby guy and these are made in the hoop and this one actually has like you can do different pants and shirt with this design. There's a, a method where you stitch a seam and then you fold the pants over and then when you put the back on it has little marks where you know where to line it up. And then same thing with the head, the, the face is stitched in the, on the embroidery machine and then the seams are also done. It's got a little um, pocket back there that the neck fits into and then you would glue or hand stitch that in place. So that's how I make these on the embroidery machine. And these are my designs at Ballyhoo Creations. And here's the other little guy. I have to put his hat on, sorry, because they're, they're matching. So this is the one with the wide body here, and this is the skinny one. So I'm calling this the, the banana body, and I'm calling this one the apple. And then they have, there's new faces that came out with them too. And I like to wire the dolls. If you haven't seen my videos before, I put um, armature wire inside so that they're poseable characters and not they're not so much play dolls the way that I make them, although you could just put stuffing in them and then it's a play doll. So perfectly good for children, unless you put the wire in. I don't think that that's a play doll at all. That's not safe. So I've been working on these. These are going out to my testers, um, hopefully this weekend and then probably another week. Um, I gotta write instructions and make a, a how-to video on them and everything. And it took a while, there's prototypes. These are a smaller size. This was, um, this one was too wide, but this is the same, similar pattern, but I thought it was too wide, so I'll squeeze it in. Just giving you a little insight into the process of when I'm digitizing, or when anybody is digitizing in the hoop. Here's the skinny, and this would be in a five by seven hoop for the body, and then the four by four for the head. Um, just the process of, you know, the creative process that we go through of, okay, I'm gonna try this. Let's see, I didn't even know what to do with the hands at that point. I went back and figured that out later. The feet got adjusted. So just different things, you know, working through the process. But the wide body and the, sorry, I forgot what I'm calling them. The apple body and the uh, apple and banana. And then there's a pear body, uh, the ones that I've done all along. Here's one here. 
that's the pair body. She's got the wide hips and the skinny up here. And these, the arms are attached on this basic body here, but it's a pear shape. And then another thing I've been working on for Easter, I have chickens. These are little in the hoop um, embroidery design chickens, and they're actually an egg cozy. So there's an egg in there that's pretty, <laughs> it's hilarious the way it like poop plops out like that. It's meant for a plastic egg that you would put candy in and see egg down there. This is the um, five by seven, you get two sides, but on the four by four, you can only do one side and then the back side's blank. And then it just has little pieces of felt for the, the beak and the, the comb and the wattles and the beak are a little piece of felt. And they're designed for stretch fabric, but I also made one out of felt. The felt, you can't actually put the egg in because the felt doesn't stretch. But you could still, I did this in yellow, so it's a little chick. Um, you could do it in blue and have a little blue bird. I mean, there's no, you can do whatever color you want just by putting different things. So that's an Easter design that's coming out pretty soon from Ballyhoo Creations. And that's what I've been working on the last two weeks, really, the, the chicks and the different doll shapes. And then um, I think that's it. That's all I have for this week. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the YouTube comment section. I love hearing from people. I love reading the comments on the YouTube videos. It's been a lot of fun for me. Hopefully I can keep up with that and keep conversing because there's some really amazing machine embroiderers out there that I'm getting to meet through YouTube. So that's been amazing. Um, have a great week and I will see you a week from now with the next vlog. Bye.